a high seed in this division, the open class division, the number five seed in the open class division in the blue gi. And Lucas Lisboa from Fight Sports immediately going forward. And one thing that really stands out to me, Jake, is that both of these competitors, very tall, very lanky. Oh, yeah. And you might know a thing or two about this. <laughs> well, because that, that, yes. that, that can be an attribute when you play jiu-jitsu and you use your frame, right? Absolutely. And one thing that I find with the taller linking competitors is sometimes it's a, a stigma that perhaps we're slower and, and uh, perhaps we just only use our range. But when you look at both of these competitors, especially one in Felipe Trova, you see real explosive dynamic movement for such a big guy. Yeah, this is a little wide angle to really see what's going in here. We really need to be a little, a little closer with the camera angle to be able to truly see what's happening on mat one here. And we see on top is Felipe Trovo. He is right now defending a very strong lapel grip from Lisboa. We see Lisboa on bottom. If we get in a little bit closer, we might be able to see the details of those grips because... I'm seeing that lapel, and, and Lisboa's got both hands on it like a baseball bat grip. And imagine he wants to drag that in and, and tie up Trovo. But Trovo using the stomp pass technique to try and get through. But now we see Lisboa has wrapped it around his leg. He's cutting the angle. And this is going to be very difficult for Trovo to escape. This is going to be, and I'm going to predict this right now, this lapel guard is going to be a theme of this match, and it's going to be how well does Felipe Trovo deal with both of the feet being active with Lucas Lisboa. A lot of people are doing this nowadays where they're grabbing the lapel and they're getting both feet involved with it instead of just the one foot. And it's going to be very important that Felipe Trovo is able to keep that other leg. You see him trying with his right hand to make a grip on that other leg. It's going to be important that he doesn't let that other leg get too busy in this lapel guard. Now Felipe, you see him throwing his right foot kind of inside, trying to deal with it. Beautiful. Yeah, it looks like that lapel is free from being wrapped around the leg, but Lisboa still has his grips, and I think that how he's passed it around Trovo's own leg. He's really um, creative here with the, the various grips that he's playing with. One of the basic tenets of lapel guard howl is it's, you have to do more than one switch. There's no lapel guard that requires only one switch, right? So you have to watch the hands. Whenever they make a grip on the hand, whenever they make a grip on your lapel, that's one grip. And the more switches you let them make without defending it, uh, and this is not easy. I'm not speaking like it's a super easy thing, but the more switches you allow the per your opponent to make in the lapel guard, the more deep you're going to be caught. And right now, you see Felipe realizes that he has... Even though he hasn't liked it, he's allowed a, a few switches here, so now he's going to have to put some pressure and deal with the lapel like you see him doing now. And another really great thing about the lapel guard is that it kills time. There's 10-minute matches here at the IBJJF Black Belt Division. That's a very long time. Uh, you have a lot of time to work, a lot of time to be patient, and the lapel guard frees up that space. It frees up that energy. And with somebody as dangerous and as active as Felipe Trovo, you need to slow him down. You need to get space. You need to make the fight. You need to get the ball in your court. Because whenever Felipe Trovo has the ability to go up and down the court, it can be very difficult. Very strategic battle of grips here in this position, and this open guard of uh, Lucas Lisboa is, um, it's, uh, it's causing a lot of issues for Felipe Trovo, but Trovo, he's very familiar with these positions himself. He's, uh, he's gonna be more than comfortable to deal with these, because just, to, just think about how many high-level training partners he has at Atos HQ in San Diego that throw these attacks up at him on the regular, He's going to know the right answers for all these attacks. And we see now, look at him settling into a heavy top control and manages to free himself from the legs. One hook in, back exposure, and immediately on the attack, Brianna can choke. 
Well, as soon as he was dealing with that, you see competitors like Gustavo Bautista blowing past lapel guard in some instances, and it's just.